Hello and uh, welcome to this special broadcast with uh, Zifa, the Zimbabwe Economic Freedom Fighters Alliance. And today I'm joined by the Zifa General. How are you, General? I am good in you, Gambakwe. How is uh, everything? Okay, fantastic. I'm so sorry I'm in the dark. And we, we have to quickly go through your program. You come here every week on a Sunday. And today we want to quickly discuss the developments that are happening in Zimbabwe. Let's start with your view on the sanctions. I know that you made certain efforts to get these sanctions removed. Can you explain to us what you did to, to contribute to the removal of the sanctions? Uh, uh, Gambakwe, first of all, thank you for giving us this platform. Um, the sanctions in Zimbabwe, they were no longer saving uh, their papers. And uh, we had wrote to Mike Johnson, the Speaker of Parliament in America, we have wrote to the Embassy of America in Zimbabwe. We had given them time until the 17th of April this year, 2024. We wrote the letters around 23 of, um, of December, uh, stating that, look, uh, we don't see the purpose of these sanctions anymore because the current regime is using them as a scapegoat to suffocate the people of Zimbabwe. And you as America, we don't know what they are saving you but currently, it seems now you are in cahoots with the current regime. So if you don't remove these sanctions and find something else for, in order to persuade the current regime to stop these human rights violations, we are going to close your embassy as Zimbabwean citizens because you are the ones who place these sanctions and the government is using them as a scapegoat and we suffer. So we don't see the purpose of your embassy in our country definitely you are in cahoots with the current regime so we rather close the embassy on the 17th of april we were going to close the embassy of america in zimbabwe and uh we we sent some letters a lot of letters to mike johnson they discussed them in their congress these letters and uh, we had sent a, a letter to the ambassador to zimbabwe uh, stating that on the 17th of april we don't want to see him in zimbabwe if the sanctions are there but to our surprise, they removed Zidera and replaced uh, them with uh, targeted sanctions against um, President Emerson Mnangagwa and the VP Chiwenga. And at this moment, I cannot say um, I know this, what they are trying to achieve America. But what I can say is uh, anyone who's violating human rights should pay for that. It cannot be overlooked. And anyone who is in corruption, he should answer for that. I cannot answer for President Emerson Mnangagwa. I cannot answer for VP Chiwenga. But what we wanted for the removal of sanctions is done. And we have achieved that milestone. And um, that's all I can say at the moment. I, I cannot speak for Mnangagwa. I cannot speak for, for Chiwenga. OK, so let's quickly go into what's happening in the country. There's been massive changes in the military. What's your view on the situation in Zimbabwe? What is happening in the Zimbabwe military? And how do you see this situation developing? And that's a conundrum situation, uh, Gambabwe. As you know that they are now, Mnangagwa is considered as a sitting duck. And uh, as we know, the culture is when the current president is about to finish his second term, we need to, they, he needs to appoint a successor. And the succession uh, line, the next in line is Chiwenga. So now he needs to make power moves. Remember, uh, Chiwenga is from the army. So definitely he still has some strong allies in the army. And he was in the forefront when they removed Robert Mugabe. So now the changes that you see in the military, they are not being made by, by the current president. They are made by the VP. It is only saving the, uh, the VP and safeguarding his succession. Uh, you see Valerius Banda, he is um, he's a close ally to Chiwenga. And the new uh, Air Marshal is a close ally also to Chiwenga. So if you look at it, these moves, they are not being made by the president. They are being made by the VP just to secure his, uh, um, his forthcoming term. And uh, I can say that is, if you take a closer look, everywhere that Mnangagwa is going, you can see Chiwenga by his side. 
and you can see uh, Muhad also by his side. That clearly shows shows you that Nangagwa is no longer making any decisions alone. These decisions they are being made by both of them or by three of them in order to safeguard the succession. Remember, we we, we haven't had any succession in in Zimbabwe, a, a peaceful succession in Zimbabwe, from Robert Mugabe or from Ian Smith. There was no longer a, a there was no, there is no any peaceful succession. So this might be the the, the first. But expect some fireworks because Mnangagwa is just not going to go like that. He's going to try to pull some other strings because he, he needs a third term. He wants a third term. But Chiwenga is not going to allow him to do that. That's why you see these shuffles in the army and you see these power moves. Uh, Valerius Banda uh, not wanting to resign. Uh, the air marshal being forced to resign. These are power moves from the VP to safeguard his succession. He, no army general can say, I don't want to resign and stays in power. There is. He, <laughs> so Valerio could not just say, I don't want to resign without him having a backup. Okay, I'm not very clear about that story. I thought it was just be our talk. Can you give us more background on, on this resignation? What do you think had happened there? Uh, and maybe you can explain a little bit more to the listeners what happened with Valerio, uh, with General Valerius Banda. Remember, Valerius Banda, he was uh, he, he was in the struggle of Zimbabwe back then with the Jiwengas. They worked together, close allies and uh, close generals. As we can say, close generals now, Valerio is a general and VP Jiwenga is a general. They work together and they understand each other. So how can you just say, uh, Valerius Banda, you are, you, tomorrow you don't come to work, you are fired. And Valerius Banda, he has a, a leverage against the, the regime. He knows so many things about the regime. So definitely, he will not allow that to happen. And as you can see, as, as you know that the army, they don't just do things. They plan everything. And they don't plan for short terms. They plan for a long term. So uh, Valerius Banda, what, what I can say is uh, he is part of the bigger plan and he is part of that long-term plan. You cannot just send him off just like that, like other generals. And he has a bigger part to play in the army. So you cannot just send him off like that. And hence, uh, Mnangagwa is a sitting duck. He cannot be firing people like that. Uh, uh, the other VPs, since they are in the line of succession, they will not allow that to happen because they will be left with a vacuum to fill. And who is going to fill that vacuum? And remember, in the army, you are only left with a few people that understand the, the, the liberation struggle of Zimbabwe. The rest are new generals and they are new uh, army, army corporals and, and sergeants. They are new. They, they were not there in the liberation struggle. So that vacuum will not be easy to fill if you don't have the people like Valerius Banda to fill the, the power vacuum in the army. And if the army is disorganized, you have a disorganized country, which means you are open for grabs from any anyone. Sorry, else. General, are you saying, are you saying Nangaba actually tried to fire Valerius Man? Uh, the rumor says that, and it is true. I, I, <laughs> I have my sources, they are telling me that it is true that Valerius Banda was fired and he refused. And uh, that power vacuum, actually, you cannot feel it. Those shoes are too big just to let them open or to give them to someone who do not understand how ZANU-PF works or how the army works. You cannot just give someone else who, who, who does not understand how ZANU-PF works to, to fill those shoes. That's why you see Valerius Banda is there. And him refusing also, it's not only him who just say, no, nah, I'm not going anyway. And he has the backup to say that. He is a close ally to Juwenga, and he has some junior, junior, junior corporals and, uh, and junior sergeants in the ranks. So definitely they will not allow him to, to, to stand down. Remember, for the past few days, you, you were seeing an army general, an, an army commander, or let's say an army sergeant with Nangago everywhere he goes. That was not just a guard. That was a, a part of the bigger plan to understand exactly what Mnangagwa is trying to do. 
And that was a message to Mnangagwa that we know everything and we are there to listen. Whatever that you talk, we are there to listen. And we will make a move if you don't go as we plan. That was okay. So I, I think I, I understand what you're saying. Uh, because remember in December they had appointed uh, General Swanda into ZANU PF, and that was reversed. And I, I guess what you're saying is that this was part of an attempt to remove him from the military and put him in the political structures where he could easily be dealt with. Yes. What are your predictions of what will happen going forward? Uh, ZANU PF is trying to, to, to politicize the army, which is a dangerous move. Uh, if you look at people like um, like Valerio, you can't uh, politicize that general because what he knows is to protect the country, not to be a politician. So, and once you politicize the army, you are most likely to have uh, more coups to happen because if a general now understands politics and now is in politics, what is going to stop him from removing the current president? And if you remove remove the general from his position as a general and deploy him to politics, now he is easy to deal to deal with because now he, he no longer holds the gun. He only is a, is a politician, and politicians are easy to deal with because you simply tell him go to the votes. If people vote for you, you are in. If they don't vote for you, now nah, it's your own baby to deal with. Then he's out at that moment. But in the army, he gets to make the decisions, crucial decisions that has to do with, to safeguard. The, the well-being of Zimbabwe and the army, they are here to stay. You don't just reshuffle the army as much as you want or just wake up and say, I'm reshuffling the army. But the government, you can reshuffle as much as you want. As long as you see fit as a president, you can reshuffle the cabinet, but the army, you cannot just reshuffle it because there are key positions that you don't just wake up and change because those people are there to safeguard the country and to safeguard the constitution of Zimbabwe. So them trying to remove him from the army, he quickly saw it that if I go to politics, jump from army to politics, they've already dealt with me because in politics, it's a game of votes. It's a game of the people voting for you. And if the people don't vote for you, you don't have anyone to cry to. And Zanu PF will okay. give you... So, so let's look at that in the context of your ultimatum. Where does that leave you as Zephyr? I, I used to ask him for the dialogue with someone who's a lame duck. What is your your look your, your your approach now? Uh, our government at this point, whoever is there, whether Mnangagwa moves out or Chiwenka moves in, we need to sit down as a country. We need to, to all the stakeholders in Zimbabwe. We need to sit down and map the way forward for Zimbabwe. We cannot have an illegitimate crisis while we are humans we can speak about the problems and solve the problems. Remember, politics is a study of finding solutions, not creating, not creating problems. If we have a problem, we need to sit down and talk about the problem, find a solution, a suitable solution that will save the people of Zimbabwe. So our ultimatum, yes, it's still on. We want to sit down. We want them to sit down. If they don't include us, it's okay as long as they sit down and find a better solution for the betterment of all Zimbabweans. This is not about us. This is not about Chiwenga or Mnangagwa. It's about the people of Zimbabwe. We cannot have a constitution uh, whereby it does not save any purposes. We cannot have a president or presidents that does not save any purpose just for the sake of being a president. And we have a crisis, economic crisis, that can be solved by us solving our, our political differences. We are at a political war, whereby this political war can be put to an end by people sitting down. Look in Sadiq, there is chaos in Sadiq, because Zimbabwe has to be the chairperson of Sadiq at the moment. But once you put our government into that Sadiq, Sadiq is going down the same drain as Zimbabwe is. We might not have Sadiq in the next five years, if Zimbabwe becomes the chairman, the chairperson, because of illegitimate crisis, and that illegitimate crisis can be solved by people sitting down and say, "Hey, look, this is the crisis that we have. How do we solve it?" and find a solution. Remember, we don't have a prescription. We don't have a prescription for a dialogue to happen. What we have is the people of Zimbabwe saying, "Hey, guys, sit down and talk. 
whatever outcome that you have, it's okay as long as it resolves the issue of illegitimacy, as long as it's, it solves the issue of a, that economic crisis that we have, we don't have a prescription. And as long okay, as... Okay, now have, let's, conclude, let, let's, let's conclude with your program. Hmm. Right now, where are we? What, what are you planning to do in the next uh, 40 days, 50 days when your alternate app comes up? How do you see this environment affecting you as Zephyr? Uh, this environment is not going to affect any Zephyr. It's not going to affect uh, only Zephyr. It's going to affect every Zimbabwe. Look, the prices are hiking. Uh, the political un uh, unstable, it's, it's, it's keep on worsening. And everyone, they don't have any, 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 any future. We don't dream in Zimbabwe. So it's going to affect everyone. But in the next 40 days, starting from now, we are mobilizing the people of Zimbabwe to say enough is enough. We need to sit down as the people of Zimbabwe. Even if we fight, after fighting, we have to sit down and talk. What triggered the independence of Zimbabwe? It was the Lancaster like House Conference, whereby people sat down and find a solution to the liberation of Zimbabwe. So now, before we fight, why can't we sit down and skip the, the, the stage of fighting and proceed to the sitting down? So, But if they don't want to sit down, the people of Zimbabwe will decide what they want to do. They want an uprising, they want to fight, or they want to, to talk. The people of Zimbabwe will decide that because enough is enough. We cannot leave our children in this country that we call Zimbabwe as it is. Which country are we giving them? Which country are we leaving to them? Remember, Zimbabwe is a trust fund that was left for us by our forefathers. Everyone has to benefit from that trust fund. If it's only benefiting the few, there is no other way than to die trying. It's better to live on our feet than to live on our knees by where we depend on this, the likes of Wikna Uchivayo giving people cars. Moreover, I can buy my own car. In Zimbabwe, has the potential of buying their own car or a potential of buying their own houses. Zimbabwe is a trust fund that is entitled to anyone who is a Zimbabwean. So they have a right and a say to that trust fund. So if they don't want to sit down, the people of Zimbabwe will decide whether they want to fight or they want to uh, they want an uprising or they will go every every one of us will go and stay in that state house and see is it gonna be ideal for 15 million people staying in that in that uh state house the people of zimbabwe will decide at the moment we are mobilizing the people of zimbabwe and the people of zimbabwe are speaking and the people of zimbabwe shall speak and their voices will be heard that's all i can say okay Okay, I, I, I'm hearing you, and um, I think it's very clear, and I, I would like to point people to your platforms. You keep updating people on what needs to happen. You come here on Gambakwe because, obviously, we are tracking the ultimatum that you have um, given to Chamisa and to Nangagwa to have dialogue. Is there anything else you want to say before we close? What I can say is, uh, for now, before we close, is uh, the people of Zimbabwe, it is time now to wake up. Enough is enough. Our forefathers has entrusted us with a trust fund called Zimbabwe. And everyone has to benefit from that trust fund. And if we are not benefiting, it's only saving the few, the elite few. There is no point on us living on our knees, fearing for our lives. Kusiri kufande kupi. We are dead already. So if we are dead already, there's nothing to fear anymore. Whereby people get abducted every time whereby people disappear. Where is Itai Zamara as we speak? What happened to Itai, uh, to Chitsungi? What happened to so many more blessing Chitsungi? What happened to so many that we don't even mention here? So we are dead already, whereby any one of us can just disappear without a trace and our government says nothing. What happened to the money that was stolen before Mugabe uh, moved out? What happened to that diamond money? Uh, where is the money? What happened to the Mbada diamond money? It's only benefiting the few elite. And us Zimbabweans, we are suffering. We are all over the world trying to save our kids, trying to, 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 to pay school fees for our kids. Moreover, the education system in our country is not saving any papers. If you take out a, a certificate from Zimbabwe, it's a joke wherever you go. 
it's a joke. You say I have finished A level or O level in Zimbabwe, it's a joke. So enough is enough. The people of Zimbabwe, it is time for us to wake up and fight for what is ours. We are entrusted with the trust fund called Zimbabwe, which has to benefit each and every Zimbabwe. So if our leaders don't want to sit down with us and talk to us and understand the suffering that we have endured for a long period, it is not ideal to keep on suffering. We need to speak up and we need uh, to come in our numbers and pursue the answers that we need. We need answers why we have an illegitimate crisis, why we have an economic crisis, why are we suffering? Why at least Zimbabwe is a rich country? Zimbabwe is a rich country, but the people of Zimbabwe are poor. Why? We need to ask those questions. This is the time. Enough is enough. The suffering is enough now. It's better to die on our feet than to live on our knees. That's all I can say for now. All right, thank you very much, General. And I apologize for talking to you in the dark. Uh, I'm in a different environment today. So let's see what happens. And we'll be back uh, with you next week again getting an update thank you very much general and thank you very much to all the viewers uh, in this environment